of where I am now toward this look rotation and I need to do it not just instantly but over a certain amount of time. We've been thinking about unity, updating time, we can get a frame rate, but there is an actual way to talk about the number of seconds and what's been going on. Unity lets us talk about delta time. Time dot delta time is the amount of time that's passed between the last time update was called and this update. Fraction of a second. So we're going to use that to multiply that times some kind of variable rotation speed. Notice we don't have rotation speed yet. We need rotation speed. And then let's go back here. Make sure we stop this. And my rotation speed, let's make that one. Apply that to the prefab. And we're good. Okay, hopefully this works. Console errors. I'll come back to that in a minute. Now they're pointing in the right direction. If we look at them, say, hey, where is yours going? I want to pull you out. Notice it keeps on making that point back to exactly where it has to go. It's going to be easier to see if we don't make it go so fast. Let's change their speed back to a smaller number here. We're moving ourselves in that spot. Does that make sense? And this slurping is helping us not just move, but move our rotation in a certain way. Might be easier to see. Let's go ahead with our sphere and constrain ourselves. I don't want to move in the y direction. I don't want to rotate in x and z. Why are those not moving? <laughs> uh, they're pointing in the right direction. The what? The plane like not perfectly flat, so we have to like drop. They're stuck in the middle. Let's change our target to be at spot one. They're still stuck. Wake up, guys. Ah, okay. Let's go back to our popular script. Change this to be two. Can you all move? Yes. Nobody's stuck inside the world anymore. But notice, because I constrained things, they're all floating <laughs> above the surface. You, you got to pick one or the other and just make it what you want it to be. Okay, questions about that debugging with gizmos. There's lots of gizmos that you can draw. You can draw cubes, you can draw rays like I did, you can draw spheres, you can draw lines, you can draw frustrums. Slurping, frustrums, what a fun day. So, any questions about gizmos? They really help me debug things, especially with these steering behaviors because they give me a way to see where I'm supposed to go you can add three or four of them. If you have three or four steering behaviors attached to an object, you're like, oh, that's where this force is pushing me. That's where that force is pushing me. I'm supposed to be going in that direction. 
I can map all those out visually so you can actually see. I have no idea which one of those it is. Yes. So I'm just trying to visualize like we were seeing before. Cross our fingers, this works. He does not sign his applications, no. Yes. Okay, and that is being a pain again. But remember, what it did look like here is that still image. I was visualizing these arrows. If you go back to that website, you'll now be able to do those as well. Okay, and gizmos are really interesting and helpful for us. Okay. I want my target to change. I want my target to move around. Now last time I did that by dropping in a character controller and saying that was my target, but I'm, I'm not exactly happy with character controllers. They're kind of crude. You can download them, drop them in, and use them, but we want to know how to make our own. We don't always just want to have a first person or a third person according to whatever it came from the template. We want to be controlling the mouse input, controlling things back and forth ourselves. So let's see what we can get to happen with that. I would like to know, based on what I do with my game, here's what I want to happen. I want to be able to click somewhere in the world and say, no, that's your target. Nope, over here, that's your target. This is where you need to go. Go to these different places. So let's see if I can make that happen. We've seen input in terms of keys, where I can say, hey, input, is this key pressed? Did they just press down the K key or the J key or the space key? We can also say, hey, what's your input from the mouse? Now, what is going to come back from that input mouse? What do you think? What kind of coordinates? A vector 3. What might that look like if I click here? Y0 and then a vector. Yes. Well, no. That's what we would want it to be. That's where we want it to go. It would be like, hey, in the world, this is where I'm clicking. It looks like you're clicking on the world. But what you're actually doing is clicking in this 2D space. You are clicking on a spot provided by the camera. The camera has given you a 2D window and notice if we change those clipping planes like you were seeing before, it changes this into like a truncated pyramid. That's what's called that fulstrum and that's where you're clicking. You're clicking like right here in this 2D plane. So the coordinates you get back are an X and a Y and a zero because you're clicking exactly in this plane. That's the window that you have. It's like you're driving your car and you're like, hey, look at that bird. You're only able to click on your windshield. You're like, that's the point that I'm able to click and show somebody. And it's usually they can't see exactly what you're seeing when you say, hey, look at that bird because they're at a different spot looking from a different camera in the passenger side and you're pointing is not going to be going to the same location in the 3D space as it is for you. Does that analogy make sense? So that's what happens here in the game. You are clicking and we really want to know where are you trying to click in the 3D world. So we have to shoot a ray out of the spot that you clicked on this particular fulstrum <coughs> down into the world and say, what do you hit if you follow this particular ray? If you follow this particular vector, go until you hit something. The thing that you hit is the thing that you're clicking in the 3D world. So there's a way to do that nice transform. OK. 
Okay, this target is going to be changing now, so I need to give it a script. Target script. Okay, so in the update, we are going to figure out where the mouse was clicked and change the target position to be at that location in world space. So those words, camera space, screen space, that's going to show up in the methods we have to call here. So let's make a ray object. Talk to the main camera. We can always go talk to the main camera with capital camera dot main. You don't have to look <coughs> it up by name. It says if you're going to make a game, you have a camera. But you just can't make a game without a camera. So it puts that thing that was the main camera in here, right there, ready for us to use all the time. We don't have to go look it up in Unity through other means. So the game camera. Let's take a screen point some point on that top of the pyramid and figure out where it goes. Okay, this gives me array object. Array that says from this, where are they really pointing? Depends on where the camera is oriented. You click on that spot, it's a perspective. It's going to go in a certain direction according to that perspective. So. Let's see what happens with it. Where is the origin of this ray? What is the direction of this ray? Let's make sure we can see it and make it red. Okay, this is our first place to say, let's visualize what I was talking about. Target doesn't have target script, obviously. There it is. Do you see the red ray? So as I move my mouse on that 2D space, it projects it from that origin point up down to the world. You can see it sort of slicing it through over here, debugging. This is where you're pointing. Oh, I can point to this one. I can point to that one, that ray is shooting down to hit them. Does that make sense? Okay, so next thing we want to do, take that ray and find the object that it's hitting. If you left clicked, then Let's make some kind of ray cast hit object. I've got a ray, it comes from a location, project it, what did you hit? That's what I want this to be. If, let's talk to the physics, use my ray and get my hit, but I have to sort of pass it in as something that can be altered. Give me that reference. Here's the object. This needs to come back. So we use this keyword out in C sharp to really say that explicitly. This hit is important to us after the function. It doesn't get returned. It gets altered by this function. Yeah. I do. I'm not done with this. Yes. Oh, parentheses. Yes. I need that too. So if it comes back that this ray hit something and the left mouse was clicked, that's the place that I wanted the target to go. So change my position 